If you ask a student upon graduation to come up with some integer sequences, you'll be amazed at how short the list is. For example, they might come up with the positive integers, with the Fibonacci sequence, with squares, with powers of two, but that would be pushing it. There's actually millions of sequences that you can find and that you can create your own. So this video is going to look at three of them from recreational mathematics. The first is a toothpick sequence. What on earth is a toothpick sequence? Well, here it is. There's no way that I could guess what made that sequence. So let's just see how it's done. So first of all, you add a single toothpick on the ground. And then we're going to be, on each step, we're going to be covering over the pointy bits of all previous toothpicks. So let's see how it works. So there's one toothpick. We're covering over those two pointy bits. Now we've got four pointy bits. We have to cover over those four. Right now we have 23 pick toothpicks, 35, 43, 47 toothpicks on the ground, 67, 79, and it keeps on going and going forever. The next sequence are vampire numbers. What are vampire numbers? Well, if I showed you the list, it starts at 126, then goes to 153, 688. I would have no idea what vampire numbers would be just based on that list if you didn't give me a hint. So I'm gonna give you a hint here. I'm going to tell you that 126 is equal to six times 21. Well, that's interesting because the digits in 126 are one, two, and six. And the digits that I use in the factorization are six, two, and one as well. Well, that's, that's what vampire numbers are. It means that you can factor them in a way that scavenges all of the digits that, have, that are in the number. Let's see for 153. What's 153? Is it equal to 15 times three? No. Is it equal to five times 13? No. Is it equal to 5 times 31? Nope. Is it equal to 3 times 51? Aha, uh -huh. yes. So there we go. So I'll leave you trying to figure out what 1206 is. I'm going to leave you for three more seconds. Okay, and it is 6 times 201. Uh, these, of course, can get quite difficult. So 1435 is equal to 35 times 41. Anyway, I think a, a fun sequence for your students to explore who are uh, looking at factorization. The next sequence that we're going to look at is called a domino sequence. And it's made with dominoes, not surprisingly. But can you figure out what the, what the rules are to create it? 1, 4, 26, 255, 2874. Oh, it's overwhelming. Okay, let's let's just see if the first one. Well, there, there's one domino. Does that help us? Not very much. And this is how the four arose. And that you can see that it looks like we're putting together two dominoes in all of the different ways to create four. Well, let's guess that 26 means that we have to put together three dominoes and that we're going to be able to do that in 26 different ways. Let's see. And it looks like our interpretation was correct. And hopefully we don't go on and try to show 2,874. That would just be too much, <laughs> too much. The number one person in the world responsible for hoarding and proliferating these integer sequences. It is Neil Sloan. You can Google him and you will find his whole website of integer sequences. Now it's time for us to play with a very basic integer sequence, and that is skip counting. So here in this game, you're going to be asked to fill in the blank the zombies are attacking and I need a staircase to escape. Here we have what looks like an arithmetic sequence, but there's a problem. The 120 looks out of place. 30, 45, blank, 75. 
looks like I have to decrease to 120 by 50 percent and that should drop it down to 60 which will give me an arithmetic sequence. I've escaped. Let's try again. This time the third stair looks too low. So this time I'm going to have to increase it. What should I increase it by? Well, if I add another 30 to that, I will have 70, 80, 90, 100, which is an arithmetic sequence. So I'm going to increase it by 50% and I will successfully escape. Enjoy making arithmetic sequences and escaping the deadly zombies.